Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and welcome to another exciting tutorial. Now, I know I say that a lot, but this time I really mean it. So, what we're actually going to be doing is taking a look at the original Light Streaks tutorial and uh, improving on the methods and uh, just taking it a step further. And we're also going to take a look at incorporating it with some live action footage, like so. What I have here is the original project file from the original tutorial that you can find at creativecow.net or my site videocopilot.net. And if you download the project file, you'll see this. And I also recommend watching the tutorial if you haven't, just so that you can uh, you know, stay on the same page with me. Now a question I get a lot is how can I incorporate this effect with my live action footage? Now currently we're using an adjustment layer with a hue and saturation and a glow applied to it. Now essentially this applies to everything beneath it. So when you put your footage into the background, it also gets colorized. Okay, so now instead of using the adjustment layer like we did previously, let's go ahead and shut that off. And also our background layer, which is simply a black solid, let's go ahead and delete that. So now if we look at our transparency, you see that the white streaks are over a transparent background. Okay, so here's where the issue comes into play. If I select the particles and try to colorize them myself using the hue and saturation control, nothing happens. I'm doing everything right, but nothing is happening. Now, the reason why it doesn't work is because this light streak is pure white. The only difference is it has an alpha that causes parts to be transparent over other parts. So if I were to look at the RGB straight, you see that it is pure white and that the alpha channel is creating this semi-transparent look. And you can see that the RGB and the alpha are pretty much the same. So what we need to do is remap the alpha to something that will colorize like a grayscale map. Don't worry if you didn't understand that. Here is the solution. Select the particle layer, choose Effect, Color Correction, Colorama. And right off the bat, we get some crazy stuff. And what we need to do is change the input phase and the output cycle. So we want to get the phase from the alpha. Because remember, the alpha is the only thing really with the difference. So that, you can see now all this color is now remapping to the alpha from semi-transparent to opaque. So what we want to do is change the output cycle preset to alpha ramp. Now you can see there's actually two nodes here. There's one and there's two and one's right behind the other one. So with the alpha ramp preset, double click on the one on the back right. Change it to black and choose OK. Now let's go ahead and recolorize this layer. Hue and saturation and let's go ahead and let's change it to like a blue. The next thing we want to do is add the glow, so effect, stylize, and glow. And pretty much just increase the radius to maybe 30. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. And let's go ahead and put a background into the comp. So this footage is 720p, so I'll right click, transform, fit to comp height, and that way it just fits in there. Now, in the original tutorial, we animated a camera. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just delete this camera altogether and create a new camera. And just use the 35 millimeter preset and choose OK. Now, in the original tutorial, I used an expression on the position to just create some random movement so that you could see the effect. However, if you want to just go ahead and add your own movements, just delete this expression and then animate the position of the light. Also I find that a better way to animate the particle position instead of using a light is using a null object. So I'm going to choose layer new null object. And instead of using this light I'm just going to delete it and link the particle up to this null object. Now this is a little tricky but definitely well worth it. So if I toggle down my effects on my particle I want to then change the emitter type to a point. And when I do that, I now have the control over the position using the plugin's controls. So what we want to do is link these to this null object. And to do that, we're going to toggle down the position for the null. 
Now you'll see this null object is in 2D space. So we want to toggle this and set a 3D layer. So we have X, Y, and Z now. And then what we're going to do is set up an expression for the particular effect emitter setting. So for the position X and Y, I'm going to alt click here and using the pick whip, drag up to the position of the null. And what happens is a little expression is created and instead of using its X and Y position, it's going to use the X and Y from this null object. So you see here temp 0, temp 1. So 0 referring to X, 1 referring to Y, and if there were a 2, the 2 would refer to the Z, but in this case there's only two parameters to remap to. And so that will perfectly link these two together. Then we have the Z, and we want to link the Z now to the position as well. So I'm going to alt click, take the pick whip, drag it up to the position. Now here's what's happening is now this expression is using the X coordinate, see 360, 360, when we want to use the Z coordinate, X, Y, Z. So what we want to do is change that to 2, because remember 0, 1, 2. And now that will remap to the Z. So now that we put the simple little expression in, we can now animate the position using the null object. Okay, so let's start animating this effect into our live action footage here. So we have this null object, but we also have this particle effect. So right now we're rendering a glow and all these other effects. So let's shut those off. And in the particular settings, let's use the motion preview setting. And that way everything will just render a lot faster. We can also delete this adjustment layer. So I'm going to take this null object and I'm going to push it down into the background. Just push it back there and just line it up with the streets back here. And then I'm going to hit P for position, set a keyframe. I'm going to move this keyframe uh, to the beginning and then move forward a little bit. And then I'm going to grab the Z axis here and just bring it forward. So it's coming straight at us, but we just want to reposition it so it kind of goes down the street. And once we get it to about here, let's have it kind of turn the corner and kind of cross the street here in front of these people. You can see we have a uh, motion sketch. Now also, our frame rate is at 90 frames per second. If I go to the composition settings, we're still at 90 frames. Uh, and if you watch the last tutorial, you'll remember why. But what I want to do is go ahead and set that to my footage, 23.976, basically 24p. Choose OK. Change my time controls to 23.976. So we're rendering um, real time here and seeing it play back in real time. So anyway, now that we have this motion sketch in place, let's go ahead and go to the particles and turn on the full preview. So as you can see, it's pretty light, not very dynamic, kind of looks plain. So let's take the Track Z camera tool and just move in closer to this particle. And we can even really get close. And I'm just tapping C and toggling through the camera controls. So let's move in a little bit more, maybe right there. Okay, now what we want to do is reanimate this so that our keyframes don't go so far off. Let's just bring this in a little bit. We can delete our last keyframe and just reanimate that. Okay, so now it kind of comes down the street, turns the corner on us. And let's just push this down a little bit too so that it's lower on the street. Okay, now it is a little fast because you can see it's breaking up here. So let's just kind of slow this down a little bit. Kind of slow this whole animation down. And I'm even going to move this over so that it kind of crosses in front of them a little bit more. So that's what's great about now having using a null object. It's much easier to control the animation because 
it's like a regular 3D layer. And not that the light wasn't a good way, it was just a little tricky. So now it's slowing down a little bit at this turn, and that's because I'm not exactly sure the velocity. We could go into the uh, position and you know we could play around with that, but you know what we can do instead is right click, choose Rove Across Time, and that'll remap it to a nice clean turn and then just right click on it again and shut that off but now it's in place where it needs to be then we can select all the keyframes hold down alt and stretch out the animation a little bit so now comes down the road and kinda cuts in front of the camera now we can go and turn that colorization back on colorama hue and saturation glow and you see we have this uh, this nice effect. You can also play around with the hue and saturation. Um, let me bring the saturation down a little bit. And you can even change the transfer mode of the particles now to say screen. And that'll just blend a little bit better with the footage. Another thing I want to focus on is making these particles a little bit more random, a little bit more lifelike. And what we can do is play around with the physics of the particle. So Let's again shut off the glow and all this so that we can render this a little bit quicker and see what's going on. I'm going to toggle down the physics for particular and play around with the air and go down to the turbulent field. Okay, so we have all these different settings in the turbulent field, effect size, effect position, and just go ahead and play around with these. And you'll see basically what's happening is randomly the size is changing um, as the animation goes on. So probably don't want to change this too much, but give it a little bit of a randomness. Also, we have the effect position. You can see that kind of disperses the particle and just also adds a little bit of randomness, which is kind of a nice effect too. Okay. You can also animate these settings so that the particles seem to be floating in air. So you can also play around with the speed in which the particle passes by the camera so that it seems to linger and uh, cause, a, cause a darker or a more colorful streak. Now another thing that I did was color corrected our background footage. So I just did a levels adjustment, kind of crushed the blacks a little bit. So as you can see, this is a pretty manageable way to use this. You can also have it wrap around logo treatments or things like that. Um, although I will say, if you're if you're ever in the street and a huge light streak comes flying by, um, you know, I'd probably be a little bit more concerned, um, unlike the people here. Also, I will remind you that the custom particle does need to go on the first frame. I know some people are having some trouble recreating that effect, and that was one of the uh, issues. Um, other cool thing you can do, so now we've added the positional keyframe data to create this effect, right? But on top of that, we can even add more randomness by adding that same expression on top of the position. So by alt-clicking on the stopwatch with the keyframes in place, we can type wiggle, I don't know, 1, comma, 30 in bracket. And what that will do is um, 1 time a second wiggle it, you know, 30 or so. So you can see, um, you know, this light streak is just kind of uh, having a good time coming down the street. Okay, so you can see it's kind of got a nice little flow to it. In the particle effect, we can also change the size over life or the opacity over life. So say I want to make the particle short um, and it kind of fades out, I can make it at birth to death be opaque and then fade out to transparent but we need to make sure that the life of the particle is short enough to be seen so if I bring the life down to say one you know, one point two seconds you can see kinda of what's happening is it's kind of a short particle almost like some sort of magical ghost that is traveled back in time possibly okay well I hope you found this tutorial useful my name is Andrew Kramer of course and uh, you can visit me at creativecal.net in the After Effects forum 
Also, check out my website, videocopilot.net. Um, we got some great products like Riot Gear, which is, uh, you know what, I can't even describe it. Just go check it out. We also got some uh, free tutorials and uh, some other fun stuff. So anyway, thanks again, and uh, we'll see you next time.